This is Prime Sports NASCAR on the Prime Sports Radio Network as we preview the 2021 season in the NASCAR Cup Series with Eric Smith from racereviewonline.net and CJ Redoon from rotowire.com. So uh, we were able to kind of put a bow tie, push that aside to the offseason, the 2021, I guess you can call it the 2020-2021 offseason, is in the books now. Uh, CJ, as we take a look at 2021 and make our predictions this year, uh, how how do you, when you based your predictions and you were going over them compared to last year, uh, much more difficult, easier? What'd you think? I thought it was more uh, difficult this year. Um, last year we had a lot of unknowns thrown at us, but we didn't know what they were going to be at the start of the season. We thought it was just like any other That's season. True kind of had an idea of how things would play out over time. I think this is a little bit different. We've got a whole bunch of new tracks, and I think that was a big factor in a lot of my decisions and, and who I took where. Uh, who I well, I tried last year, too. We, we were thinking that the, the – wasn't last year the year that we thought that the uh, – the what was it? The package was going to really determine uh-huh. – Yes. The racing, and it was not even close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too many external factors made <laughs> <laughs> less of a story. Um, I think the road courses, uh, the dirt track in Bristol, those are going to be big stories, though, this year. And uh, unlike last year, we don't have a big crop of rookies either. So uh, we've got a lot of guys with new teams, uh, which will be interesting, but they're new with big teams. Uh, so if, to me, it's, it's a little bit difficult uh, or more difficult than, than last year, just kind of splitting hairs between who the best team is going to be and who the best drivers within them will be. Yeah, because I was looking at it. And I, I really thought, Eric, that the this year that there's more. We have 16 drivers that can get into the playoffs, and over the last several years, or at least again, last year was just different. But before that, okay, as you know, you kind of figured 17 or 18, and out of 16, and you were pretty. It's just one or two of these drivers. But now I had, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight drivers that I did not put into my 16 that I could have. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's exactly right. I, I've struggled to get it down to 16. Uh, it's like, whoa, I've, I've got a solid list of 22 to 24 that can easily any one of them make it. And like CJ said, you had the road courses in. You got a dirt race. The super speedways are always a wild card. I mean, 12 of the 36 races this year, that's a third, are wild card races. You don't know what you're going to get. I mean, if you go off road courses, yeah, Chase Elliott is the best. He's won four in a row, but he's not going to win all seven. Um, some guys aren't good at road courses. It's it's a fact. We've seen they just don't – they're not good on road courses. Um, dirt is going to – like we talked about in the last show, that's going to completely change everything. Does it, If it doesn't, is that where Kyle Larson and Christopher Bell swings their way in? Um, do you get another weird winner? So – yeah, it was hard to narrow it down to 16, to be honest. It, I haven't said that in a lot of years. It's it, Especially in this playoff format where they expanded to 16, it usually it's like, man, how do I how do I even get this up to 16? I got about 12. I don't. Who are these other four going to be? Now it's how do, who do I leave off? Because you've got so many solid teams, and you go the aspect that there's no practice or qualifying for a majority of the races, too. It's, it's definitely a hard, a hard year to handicap. And then throw and then as far as champions, let's keep in mind, and we talked a little bit about this uh, last week, that you you see how some of these drivers have come out of the gate so strong, dominating the first half of the season. Oh, it's just going to be. And look, in years past, it was starting to get predictable, even into last year. Last year was the first year. It, it, it The predictability kind of stopped. We didn't have the same three out of four drivers that were there, but still it was, uh, you know, whoever was dominating early at least made it to the final four, but that didn't always spell victory. And it just proof is the fact that we've had six different champs in the seven year, uh, new playoff era, CJ. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's interesting. Cause as you're talking, I, I, I thought of Kevin Harvick, right? So he was the one that had the most wins. He and Denny Hamlin traded off all last yeah. season. Uh, he got knocked out and there were specific areas and, you know, you heard it in some of his interviews leading up to this weekend's or this week's events. And uh, he pointed them out where they were weak and where they need to improve. So um, it, it's, it's very much turned into a momentum thing. We talked about it as we closed out the 2020 season where, 
just making it to the final four is, you know, top of everybody's list. And if you can get, get your race win in early, um, that's fine. That's great. You can relax and kind of like Logano uh, and his approach last year, get your race win in early, uh, develop your yourself and make sure that you're peaking when you get to the playoffs, because that's when it's really going to matter. Uh, Kevin Harvick, you know, everybody, <laughs> after all his wins, he would have been, he was the, the favorite to win the title. He didn't even get to the final race. No. Well, you got to look at Kevin Harvick was the Kansas city chiefs and Chase Elliott was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, if you go with a regular season, everybody, Hey, here's the Lombardi trophy, Kansas city. Uh, we'll, we'll play the games, but we can't stop Mahomes. It's yours. Tampa Bay got hot. I mean, Tampa Bay got hot in the right moment and they rode the wave to the Super Bowl champ. And that's what NASCAR has become. It, and that's where the shift has changed with what our parents and our grandparents have grown accustomed to NASCAR. They're not points racing anymore. It's who can get hot and all the champions in this, in this era, exception of Kyle Busch, they didn't start off the year hot. They got hot as the season went on, right when it mattered the most, and they rode it to a championship. And that's what NASCAR has become. As it's a 36 race season, and you don't have to be great until the playoffs really start. That's when you have to turn it on. And and we've seen guys that turn it on at the right moments. And that's why I think we're seeing a fundamental shift in the series. That, that's that's the direction they're going, and they're not going the other direction. So, They've proven that. So that means that. Uh, teams now crew chiefs and so forth are strategizing do you think that that's actually mm -hmm. what they're doing is saying look let's let's concern ourselves more with testing ourselves out for the second half of the season the tracks that or even the playoff tracks that are going to be the most important and we're willing to sacrifice results early in the season is that something that you think is happening with the majority of teams or just a certain percentage? I think once you have speed, you see some sacrifices. If you're confident you're going to be able to win a race, that's when you can start trying to aim, uh, looking at the schedule, looking ahead, but you don't want to get too far ahead of your skis. I mean, look at Kyle Busch last year. He took so long uh, to, to actually find his way into victory lane. And it wasn't like he was completely lacking speed. He was at the beginning, but they picked it up and he started scoring top fives, top threes. He just couldn't get into victory lane. So I think if you get an early win or if you're consistently in the top five in the early couple of weeks, you don't have a window. I think you can start being a little bit more relaxed. So, so make sure that you, 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 you have your, you, you know, you're going to make the playoffs first before yep. you yep. start doing any of that early season sacrificing. Yep. Yeah. And you got to look at it this way too. It's, you would rather almost come in lacking a little bit in speed because you know what you need to work on. You know, we're like, oh, we're, we're off here. These guys have all been around long enough. They know where they're missing it. They know where they're off. Well, you've got weeks to work on it. Well, if you come in and you're on the A game and you're on top, well, how do you know where you need to work if you're already up there? You don't, what are you striving? Like, oh, but we've got great speed. What, why do we want to lose this? Why do we want to change something and risk not getting the speed back. You've got chemistry. You've got yeah. momentum. Why break it? That's true. Where everybody else is chasing you. So it's it's a tough balance of how do you how do you balance having the speed, but you also have to keep developing to get more speed because you know the guys are chasing you. They know where to work in. So it, it's a it's a tough game, and this this trend has shown that these guys with the speed don't keep it for all thirty six races. Now, last week we said that every week, anytime we come up with all these brilliant ideas. Uh, to change NASCAR, you know, basically, you know, an I want to be a NASCAR commissioner kind of deal. I already thought of something, of course, and that is, and we talked about it last year. What about more drivers with the opportunity to win a championship in the last race, CJ? Yeah, I mean, if you if you're gonna if you're fully bought into the the playoff mode and the the elimination and the fact that uh, one race winner takes all, yeah, I, I think um, Kevin Harvick certainly would have liked that last year, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think that plays into something that was disappointing at the end of last year too. The the Phoenix race we talked about it. They were one, two, three, four, the championship four. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I mean that there's no reason that should be. And any other week in in the series, it wouldn't have been that way. Um, so, yeah, I think um, I think opening it up, having a little bit more uh, and NASCAR will come back with the argument, same argument they use for instituting the playoffs. Well, history shows and statistics shows that people outside of the top 15 never won the championship anyway. So, yeah, but it makes it more exciting, doesn't it? Especially in yeah. a winner kind of format. And, and look, it's not like you 
have to win the race. You see, yeah. in, in like golf, yeah. where they've put it together, where you have to win the final event, NASCAR hasn't figured that out yet. So if unless they're going to figure it out where you have to win the race, then I don't see any reason why you shouldn't have more drivers. Why not? We have to kind of we have to put all those stats in for four drivers. I don't really think I think it is more exciting, uh, Eric, if we have double eight drivers that we have to because I, I just you know, it's a little harder to go one through eight. You know, than it is one through four. I think one through four, it's a lot easier for everybody to stay out of the way. But I don't yep. think you could stay out of the way so easily one through eight. No, and or because you don't want to get too much to muddy it down, but you also got to have a happy medium. And and if it is four, six, eight, whatever it is, at least give a large incentive for the other guys to want to race. Absolutely, like just a bonus, it, like a large bonus. Like you've got to have your title sponsor of your final race. A million dollars. I know a million dollars sounds a lot to us. The race teams, it's nothing. But is it two million, three million, four million? What is it to get these guys to race hard to get to the win? I mean, it, it, last year was a farce. I mean, nothing against Chase Elliott. Yeah, he had a good car, but come on. And Phoenix, he came from last to like twenty first in like four <laughs> laps. And then you mean to tell me there's not one other car on that track that could do the moves that he? It's like. Come on, those guys are getting out of his way. So and we stole money from Vegas last year because of that, because we knew yep. that he was going to happen, and and it made yep. no difference that he was all the way back there. Yeah, how about uh, you make it five, and you give some incentive to the first part of the uh, championship, per first part of the season, the first person not to make it in, that seventeenth place driver at the end of the point season automatically gets to race for the title in the final. That's a nice one. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. See. All these interesting ideas we're coming up would have with, been but Johnson last year, wouldn't it? Who's that? Jimmy Johnson would have oh, been. Oh, Jimmy, yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, I'll come back. The money. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy won't be coming back. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, let's go through. I, I want to go through some of these teams. We talked a little bit about it, but uh, it, last week, but in a different way, and that is, uh, you, you see, for instance, uh, JGR. They have these veterans, and they've got to get younger. And then I was looking at, um, I think it was, what was the other team I was looking at? I think it was um, Harvick's, right? Stuart yeah. Haas. Yep. Stuart yes. Haas. I was looking at uh, Stuart Haas, and I was going, wait a second. where, What happened to all those Kevin Harvick's, uh, <laughs> his, his experienced teammates they're all gone so that's an interesting deal there where you have gibbs has got the experience of hamlin kyle bush and truex with only one youngster in bell but harvick he's got almarola chase briscoe and cole custer i mean that has to affect harvick it does he kind of talked about that that he it helps the whole organization if you're all winning um, he talked about this in his media call the other day, but you also got to think Kevin Harvick, if he's not winning races, you've got to have teammates up front taking stage points, playoff yeah. points for maybe a stage win, uh, finishes in the end from his competition, because if they're not running up front, in the top five, top 10, that's going, those points are going to Gibbs or Penske or Hendrick or Ganassi's guys. I'm going to tell you right now, Eric, they're not going to be racing consistently in the top 10. I don't think they are this year. That's that's where our fun over under game and our playoff picks later are going to be. Uh, uh, that's why it's in there because that's our, our tease, our first over under, and you'll get our our analysis on this in a minute. Is over under six wins for Stuart Haas and and the combined outside of Kevin Harvick take them yeah. away. They've got they three combined one? wins. Can they? Yeah, that's going to be the key. You yeah. know, Kevin Harvick's not winning nine races again this year. Um, no. As a team, they won 10 last year. I gave them four wins away. I took four wins. Can they hit that? That's why the over unders at six is it, can they hit six? Can he get some help? And it, it's going to be tough. So, but they're in that transition. I, I, Almarola's year to year. He's not going to be around too much longer. He's, he's got another one year contract for this year. And, and where do they go? Um, they're already getting younger, and that's that's where Gibbs has a decision to make. I mean, they. I, I think he's. I think he's in his last year. If he doesn't step up and actually yep. make a, a something, do something, just getting into the playoffs and getting eliminated in the first or even second round, it's just not going to do it. That's it. 
I mean, you got to start winning some races. His thing, I think the only reason he's there, um, he's a solid top 16 playoff yeah, driver. That's it. He, he's your, he's like a, he's, he's like a, a Matt Kenseth light yep. type of driver. He's your NBA team. That's always in the back six, seven, eight of the playoffs. You know, they're good enough to make it. They're not a lottery team, but they're not, they don't make any noise. And he brings Smithfield sponsorship. So it helps Stewart stay a four car team. And I get it. But at some point you can't keep losing out on younger drivers to fill that gap when he's taking the ride. And, and that's where Gibbs is about to be. I mean, look, they just got rid of Eric Jones. I mean, the guy, the kid's what, 23 years old, 24. He's a young guy. Um, got a lot of upside, but they don't have room for him. And I get it. You're not going to be the team that's like, oh, Truex has made the, the championship four. And was it like, I actually even have that right here. I think it's five or six years, Truex. Four championship fours in the last six years. You got Kyle Busch, five championship fours in the last six years. He's the only guy in the whole field that's a multi-champion now. You got Denny Hamlin, two straight championship fours. Only Kevin Harvick has won as many races as he has the last two years. Those are three of your four drivers. Who do you cut? Who do you cut for to keep Eric Jones around? So I well, get the decision. Shouldn't they though? Then I mean, sh- I mean, isn't it just like, well, yeah, but once once one of these guys moves on, we can just pluck one of our old young dri- or you know one of our former little young pups and steal them. They could do that, if, right? If they're still there, if, if they're pick- there, yeah. Well, what kind of contracts right now? Like, give me a couple of examples of some of the young drivers that have left and what their contracts currently look like. Uh, we got well, you, somebody like Kyle Larson. You yeah. lost out on him. Well, Larson, yeah. Um, I think he's at a different level. How about some of the younger younger guys? William Byron. Okay. He had him. Um, he's got another two more years. I think he's a free agent either next year or the year after. With him. I know he just signed an extension. I think he's got another year or two. Um, Eric Jones, he's got a two-year deal with Petty. He just lost out on him. Noah Gregson, he's in the Xfinity Series with Junior Motorsports, but he's a Chevy driver um i don't think you're you you may not get him back because what toyota typically does their business model is you have all these young kids a lot of them bring money you sign them into development deal you bring them from kbm and trucks up to gibbs uh, on xfinity and then up to gibbs and cup and you've only got four rides and cup and you know hey it's prove it or lose it basically you got one year show you deserve that seat if you don't they got another young kid waiting right behind you and they replace you but as you get farther and farther up the ranks, these guys typically would be moving into cup rides, but they don't have cup rides to move into. We're like sure. Ford or Chevy. You've got an abundance of rides. They've only got four. So, so that's not fair in a way to Joe Gibbs because they're, they're, pro- they're producing these, this talent. They are mm-hmm. responsible. They're not just lucky, right? I mean, they're, they're, no, they're, they, have a, yeah. they have a keen eye for talent, right? Yeah. You're grooming these kids. Yeah. It's, to go um, somewhere like a, else. Yeah, that's exactly what's like a, an example. Harrison Burton, Jeff Burton's son, is in a, he's a, this is his second year in Xfinity Series. And he proved last year he can win. He, he was a good talent. But, okay, what if he wins the championship this year or makes the championship four? Does he really need to come back there next year again? But he's been a toy development driver. Gibbs has developed him. And Xfinity's last couple of years, he's deserving of a cup seat. Well, who does he knock out? You're not getting rid of Christopher Bell after a year. Uh, Denny Hamlin just signed a multi-year uh, renewal contract. You're not getting rid of Kyle Busch. So is it Truex? He doesn't have a contract next year, but he just said talks on his, on his media availability on Friday have been progressing. So if you bring him back, you've got no room for Harrison Burton. Does he go to a Hendrick? Does he go to a Penske to some Stuart Haas who they could have an opening? Do they just steal, steal him? It's the transition to all these other teams have gotten younger and Gibbs hasn't yet. And are they going to, how many more drivers do they lose out on? It's, it's an interesting problem to have that. Well, I I, I, I mean, they're still doing the right thing though, aren't they? Yeah. I wouldn't cut ties with any of those veterans that you got. They just need Toyota needs more more manpower in the cup. They need more than four cars, which more they gained one. Yeah. Another team is what they need. Cause, um, but, but I just not don't allowed, see right. Gibbs. Toyota can. Can. Toyota can. Oh, Toyota can. Yeah. Gibbs is just maxed out at four cars, but like where Chevrolet's got Ganassi and, uh, Richard Childress so racing and Hendrick. Why don't they have another team money? Their, their business philosophy has been 
hey, let's put all of our resources in these four cars. And that's why Gibbs has been so good with Toyota. Hey, let's instead of having five or six teams, uh, organizations, we've got four cars. We put all of our resources in these four. Well, they added one now with Bubba Wallace and the Michael Jordan, Denny Hamlin team. But are they in a position to expand next year in their second okay. year? They they need another they need another Joe Gibbs racing. They need another. Eventually, could that be Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan's team? Sure. But I don't think they're there yet. I mean, they haven't even ran a race yet. <laughs> and here I'm already saying, hey, they should expand two or three cars. Yeah. They, they have yeah. So they're they're kind of stuck in that sense. And well, they probably it, will, though. I mean, if, if things go well, there's no reason to believe that that wouldn't be. It, there, there's our there's our startup team, and let's add some more cars there. It, that's probably going to be the plan. Furniture Row was that plan. That's why they expanded to two to bring Eric Jones. It's just the money and resources weren't right to sustain that. So it's, it's going to be tough. There's yeah. a lot of owners looking to get in, but it's, it's a, it's their business model they, they feel like you should, they're giving you top equipment and you got a couple of years to prove it. And if you can't win, then you're out. Um, but, and, and, and then, uh, and then on the flip side, as a, a, again, so with Harvick and Stuart Haas, I mean, they're again, it, it's, is there anything they could have done? Are they doing it right? It's just timing. Did they do anything wrong, CJ, that you can think of that put them in this spot? Or do you think that this was their plan all along and they're completely happy with it? In terms of the drivers that they yes, have now? The young drivers with Harvick. No, I, I, I think they're making the right moves. I think they've got Harvick, um, who's incredibly experienced and definitely the guy that you want to be looking to to mentor your young drivers. Eric Almarola, <clears throat> his consistency, like we all just said, he's a consistent playoff driver, top 16. Why wouldn't you pair them with two new guys coming in, build the future of your team, build that consistency and get some kind of up, upward momentum uh, from 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 the teammates. I, I mean, they're not going to be able to contribute anything more to Kevin Harvick. I mean, there are very few people that can come into a team and add to Kevin Harvick and what he brings to a team. Um, so why not have him start passing on his legacy? Uh, same thing with Al Marola as well. All right. And Elliot, I was speaking of young drivers, and he's really not that young anymore compared to some of these other pups. But he comes out, wins the championship last year, which probably shouldn't have been a surprise. Nothing should be a surprise of what happened this, this past season in every sport with everything that went on. But I, I also, but the timing I think is perfect because of this. That we are now entering a completely different. We just opened with it. There is just more. There's more talent than ever before. Yes, a lot, a lot of it's young, but that's okay. There's still a lot more talent, a lot more parity on paper, Eric, than before. But that also makes it a little bit more difficult to repeat. Yep. Uh, and Chase Elliott, as talent, talent, you would say, oh my God, he's what he won already. Which is how look how many championships he's probably is he the next Jimmy Johnson? I just I mean the way things are going, <laughs> winning the way Jimmy Johnson won and dominated for those years just ain't happening anymore. No, it's and Jimmy Johnson, they worked the playoff system flawlessly to where they're a step ahead of everybody and, and they a had a completely different out. system than we're dealing yep, with today. It is. They 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 didn't win well, I'm take that back. One of their six came in the playoff era. Their other and that was were, that's and that was a surprise. That that yeah. was like the the craziest, most fortunate championship that we've had with the new yep. system. Yep. So this system is parity. It, it's a playoff format. It's not. It, it's points, but it's not about points. You win and you keep moving on. So I don't think, and that's why, like CJ said, these drivers all talked about. It's more Final Fours than championships now that they want to be based on. Because if you can make it there, it's going to be hard to make Final Fours. It's just. It's tough to march through and have your races line up to where there's no downward trend. There's no downfall. You've got to be on top of your game. So, I mean, it's two times since 1995 have we have a repeat champion. And Jimmy Johnson was one of them on this, that five-year reign. Jeff Gordon, the other. So, odds are not favorable for Chase Elliott to win another championship this year. And, and I get he's only 24 years old. He's got plenty of time yeah. to win more. Yeah. But it, you got to look at it. It is a new era, like you said, of NASCAR. And NASCAR has always had, you go back to the 60s and 70s, Richard Petty, then it rolled into Dale Earnhardt, then it rolled into Jeff Gordon, then it's rolled into Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, 
now it's probably Chase Elliott's NASCAR. I mean, it's, the keys have been handed to him. Jimmy Johnson's gone. He took 83 wins and seven championships with him. And, and I haven't done the math on this. I need to do it. I should have done it before the show. Is, is this the least amount of championships won combined above drivers in the field for one season? I mean, we've only got probably. six different or seven drivers left that's even won a championship. And Kyle Busch is the only one that's won more than one. And that's the era we're going to. So, again, it doesn't. history doesn't show that Chase Elliott's necessarily going to win, but he's he's been the most popular driver the last couple of years. You give him a championship now. I think this is his NASCAR. And as a 24-year-old, able to handle that. I mean, he's a pretty cool, calm, collective guy. And But this is his era. The, the Everything else, everything above him is gone. All those stars, all the your, your generational guys are gone. And is that a lot of pressure to put on a 24-year-old for another season? And it's, I think this is his NASCAR, but you also got to look at, is that what NASCAR wants it to be? I mean, you got Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch. They have the top two all-time winners active in the field. They're championship favorites every year. They're in the prime of their career, but do they want to get overlooked for a 24-year-old? It's, it's a fundamental shift, and that's what's coming. And, and it, it's not – history doesn't prove that it's probably going to be a Chase Elliott championship despite having seven road courses – on the schedule this year, and he's won four straight on road courses. Well, there's but... no road course, though, in the final race of the season. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, is Chase married? No. Does he have no. a serious girlfriend? Uh, he did. Um, and then I did see posts last fall of a bunch of NASCAR fans heartbroken because it looked like he was dating a Hooters girl in Colorado. Him and Ryan Blaney <laughs> are breaking some some females' hearts. But uh, All right, speaking sure of Ryan it's... Blaney, that's also going to be very important. We need because look, we, we don't we talked about this a lot. the The thing we're missing are the rivalries. We don't have the, and I'm not talking the friendly rivalries. We're talking like you know, I don't like you, you don't like me. There's just not a lot of that, and these, th- th- this new wave, CJ, of kids coming up, they're just not built that way, unfortunately, for us. Um, but if we can't get that, hopefully we still can, and if we can, maybe you can give me give me a potential rivalry, like a I don't like you rivalry that we could have. Um, th- <laughs> think about that. But what we also need, worst case scenario, is just a – Rivalry, rival, rivalry of young drivers like Elliot Blaney, that kind of deal. Where, but first, Blaney's got to win his championship and so forth, and then we got to get another young driver up there competing for a championship or winning a championship. That's the next step, so we could start building some nice rivalries with this young group. Yeah, you're right, and I think we'll see Blaney and Elliot rivaling for wins. There, I, I highly highly doubt they're ever going to be i don't like you kind yeah. of rival yeah they're best friends <laughs> i don't think you'll see yeah um, unless one of them gets serious with the hooter girl and any other one steals the hooter girl so uh but yeah i i don't see that happening where where we have the i hate you or not hate maybe is a strong word i don't like you rivalry is kyle bush and joey logano um i think it's going to take a new rookie um, maybe one of the Hendrick guys not named Elliot somewhere like a Bowman or a Byron, perhaps, uh, if they start getting really successful, uh, and really aggressive. Um, but I think right now we've got to pin our hopes on that type of dynamic with Logano and Bush for at least another year until somebody, you know, one of the brand new guys, uh, comes in and starts really ruffling feathers like, a, a Noah Gragson or, or somebody like that coming in and starting to find real quick, immediate success. I think that's when you'll start to see some of the friction that some of the older, uh, guys have had. Cause the guys, the young guys here came, came up together They They've been racing together forever. They're good friends. Uh, but you do see, you do see some of the anger boiling over in the Xfinity and in the truck series. So, uh, once those guys get up here, I think it'll come with them. Eric, you know, can you think of any potential rivalries or even drivers that have the ability or have shown they got a hot temper, uh, but, you know, they have talent. They have to learn to harness that temper, even though we don't want them to. So uh, could you name any driver or drivers that could fit that bill and then any potential rivalries you could see down the road? I will say I'll give you four names that are going to start the rivalry. 
Um, and I don't know who it's going to be against, but because of this racing package, you got to be aggressive and you're going to have to be aggressive on restarts to go for wins. And there's four names that seem to ruffle more feathers because of their aggression are Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, Tyler Reddick, and Ross Chastain. Those four are going to make it four wide, three wide on a restart, put their car somewhere where it doesn't belong because you have to be aggressive to go for a win. And they're going to get into the wrong person and they're going to cut down a tire of that person or accidentally. Re- it's not going to be intent like, oh, I'm going to purposely piss this guy off and wreck him. It's going to sure. be, I got to go for the win. I'm lined up third, fifth, seventh, somewhere on the inside on a restart and I'm going to dive bomb somebody. It's my only shot and it's not going to work. And those drivers have no fear in doing that. They've proven, I mean, Reddick likes to run the high side. He's even said, like, I, I'm sorry for making people mad. I just, that's my nature. I drive 100%. And Chastain is probably double that. <laughs> Chastain probably needs to reel it in a little bit. Okay. But that's his driving style. And he's like, like CJ said, those are two younger guys. Chast- Chastain's well, not and a Chastain, rookie. Chastain, those are the two young ones to keep an eye on that could yep. help start a rivalry. Yep. And even maybe somebody like a Bubba Wallace, because like I talked about last show, Chastain and Bubba know. This is probably your only shot. This is probably the only thing you're going to get as far as the top ride. If you don't perform, um, you're out. It's not going to work much past a couple of years. So though Chastain knows that more than Bubba, they're going to make moves out of desperation just because, of, hey, when am I going to be in this position again? I got to go for it, and I'll, I'll so. apologize later. Um, so I think if you see any feuds, it's going to be on-track moves by those guys doing that um, and forcing – that other car, I, I, it's hard to predict who that car is going to be, but it's going to make somebody mad that they made that move, and you're going to see um, probably a rivalry that way. And my other one that would be, which is completely lighthearted, is if uh, William Byron breaks up with Ryan Blaney's girlfriend and there's <laughs> bad blood there, um, then maybe those two go at it. All right. <laughs> because uh, Byron's but, dating Ryan Blaney's sister. <laughs> so okay. other than that, <laughs> that's you know, hey, it, it happens. <laughs> and... Uh, and then we'll also see if ch- when Chase does get serious and then maybe gets engaged. Was he engaged with this girl? The, the Hooters girl was out of nowhere. I don't know if that was just like a date. That was his was serious relationship? The Hooters no, 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 no. Yeah, the girl the- before him was uh, <laughs> her. Well, I guess I could say it. It's, it's pretty common in the. <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's smarter than that. Hooters girls Hooters, all over yeah. the world are going, we yeah. can't get serious with guys? Yeah. What is this about? <laughs> his uh, his serious girl from before that was, uh, I don't know if CJ probably remembers the name, David Green, the oh. Bush Grand National. Yeah, Her, yeah. His daughter was his uh, girlfriend for a lot of years. And and here's where he lucked out. He won the champion. They, I don't know what part if they broke up between 2019 and 2020 or some part of 2020, um, her dad's the head of like the inspection. <laughs> so you, you would have thought like, Hey, be careful of breaking up with her. You're not, your nine cars aren't going to be passing inspection much okay. longer. Um, Back in so, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't do too much like TMZ. So I don't know what happened. I just know they were dating because she was following me on Twitter too. And I could see, well, the relationship that, between the two, we'll, and we'll it's keep, not any longer. Well, we'll keep an eye then on when Chase gets engaged, gets married, because then we'll find out, you know, as, as a kid, that's when, he, you know, and, and the good for him that he's yep. a few years away from that. Because if he's single right now, which you say he is, and he's not engaged right now, then yeah, he's, he's at not. least a few years away where this is this is the time, man. Enjoy it. Take Take advantage as much as you can. Because once all the other distractions off the track start coming down, then you just never know. Uh, I mean, I, I think it hurts like golfers more than NASCAR drivers. And I'm talking about, of course, individual sports, just because there's so much. Every little thing you do in golf is just important. And one little thing that you're off in your swing can disrupt your whole game. NASCAR is a lot, a lot different. Um, and I see it happen all the time. I mean, Ricky Fowler has gone downhill since he's been married. And I don't want anybody to tell me otherwise that that hasn't been the reason. Because you don't have a career the way he's had it and then go from top 10 to outside the top 50 in the last year. And what's happened in the last year? He got married. Hmm. It it happens. And and, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. He's rich. 
and he's a happy man. But that's the thing that I think we'll keep an eye on with Chase when he gets married. How does that affect him at the track? But right now he's uh, he's dialed in and he should take advantage of it as, as far as he and as long as he can. He can, and he's he's one of the most mature twenty four year olds I think I've ever and that's come across. True too. I mean, he's it probably he's won't very them. he's very private. I, I don't unless you kind of connected the dots. I don't think anybody probably would even realized that he was dating uh, David yeah, Green's probably. daughter. I mean he's he's probably it's going to be a situation where like Aaron Rodgers just did the other night where he's going to slip and say he's his fiance or engaged. And you're like, whoa, I had no idea Chase Elliott even had a girlfriend. <laughs> like that's where he's that private and okay. he's. He's so humble that I think I don't think it would affect him. Um, but I, I I could also see him staying single for a while too. I mean, he's why not? You're in the popularity, the most popular driver. I think it builds a brand to unfortunately say that. I mean, hey, I hope his off. I, I don't like to get involved in his off track personal life, but I know sometimes that love can be a happiness to some people. But it also helps NASCAR for the female generation. That let's be honest, that is going to want to see a chance to chase Elliot. That's so, true too. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, he's a humble guy in all seriousness. I, I don't think it'll affect him, but, but I mean, plus, um, you know, he's lucky to have his father and everything that his father went through in the sport. That's a very, that's, 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 that's one advantage he has definitely taken. Uh, and, uh, and, and no question. That's been part of the reason why he was able to win a championship so early in his career. So. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. All right. So let's go to our picks. And we will break it down with. Tell you what, let's let's, uh, let's go through. I'll I'll give my round of sixteen drivers first, and then uh, CJ, you'll be next, and Eric, you'll be last. And then we'll uh, take a look also at the drivers that we were all uh, different as far as who we did not get into the playoffs. Anyway, I'll start with my round of sixteen drivers. Will be Chris Busher, Kurt. Bush, and, I'm, and again, I'm not, these are the guys that are going to be eliminated in the round of 16. Chris Busher, Kurt Busch, Austin Dillon, and Tyler Reddick. So those are my, uh, those are the, those are the ones there. Uh, reaction towards any of them, CJ? No, I can't argue because like we all said at the beginning, there are 20 to 22 drivers that you could put in, yeah. and I um, How about Kurt Busch yeah. going out early? No big deal, right? <laughs> no, not not with the field the way that it is this year. Um, okay. Yeah, I can't disagree. Who do you got, CJ? Round of 16. Round of 16 coming out. I've got Christopher Bell, Eric Almarola, Matt Benedetto, and Tyler Reddick. All right, Benedetto. Do you have Benedetto, Eric? I do not. I have him right. uh, so narrowly missing it. You're the only one with Benedetto. I'm the only one with Busher, I believe, right? I think so. Yes. Okay. I was going to you have him on points, so you have him winning the Super Speedway. Oh, I, I haven't been as technical as you. <laughs> chances I, are, I, almost, I mean, a driver like that, though, and he has been really good on the Super Speedways. So He can do that. Yeah. He I almost had him winning the Super Speedway, and I was like, uh, yeah. uh, then I went through the, hey, let's just play it out on, on points and not factor in fluke winners yet, and Narrowly, I, I, I know you had him last year in your playoffs, uh, CJ, and I just, I mean, I had him later in my fantasy team too. Mm -hmm. I just think that there's, I think he's got the talent. I just do. I, I, I don't, I, and and I don't know whether or not it's because he's not on the best of teams and so forth. But I mean, Ryan Newman, is he a good teammate? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think I think Roush just needs to step up their game with their equipment. If they can get on par with some of the other big teams, even an Earnhardt, uh, I'm sorry, Earnhardt Ganassi, even with Ganassi racing, how old? <laughs> yeah, see, you're going throwback there. <laughs> um, even if they can get on par with uh, them, I think you'll start to see Busher's true talent really come out. And I, he can definitely win on super speedways without question. He can point his way in. Uh, I think with better equipment, he can win on most of the other courses as well. All right. And Eric? I've got my first round exit being Bubba Wallace, Tyler Reddick in both Ganassi cars, and Kurt Busch and uh, Ross Chastain. Okay, so Chastain and Wallace. You're the only one to have Wallace and Chastain. You and I both agree Kurt Busch out in the first round. And then uh, you went with Reddick. We all went with Reddick, right? Yep, yep, okay. yep. We all went. 
We all have Reddick in the playoffs. Both you guys, both you guys went uh, with Bell. I did not. All right, but we all have Reddick. Okay, and Wallace Chastain. Why'd you go with those guys? I think they're going to get a win. I, I think they'll find a win in the regular season. So uh, I don't know where. Um, I think it'll be a mile and a half for Chastain. Uh, Bubba. Uh, he's, come, I, I think, he's, he's come close a few times on the super speedways. Bubba yeah, has. I, I think he can get one on either Daytona or Talladega. Yeah. Or uh, I, I'm curious. I'm, I'm going off of, like we talked about that last week, The that car is going to be essentially a fifth Gibbs car, and he'll find a way to victory somewhere if it's going to be on those, that par. Um, we'll have good teammates. He will. It, in a race I like also that. had him if he didn't win as the last wild card driver in um i think he can points his way in really? again if okay. it is a fifth gibbs car if it comes out and it struggles then i don't think he's getting in and i would have austin dylan in in his place but right now i've got uh i got him as kind of like your 16 seed and uh him just not with darlington richmond and bristol in your first round i don't have him winning either and i think it'd be a little bit hard of a deficit to get up to the top 12 so um that's why i have him out yeah, Wallace uh, and Chastain, their odds are actually a little bit better than I thought they would be to win the championship. They're actually better than Austin Dillon and Tyler Reddick. So I was a little surprised by that. Okay, little. let's go to the round of 12 drivers that are eliminated from our playoff predictions. And I'm going to go William Byron. And I'm going to go with three surprises. I'm going to go Eric Jones in the round of 12. And then I'm eliminating both Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick. Wow. In the round of 12. (laughs) That's big. Yeah. I don't know if I'm more surprised you got Eric Jones making, not only making the playoffs (laughs) in the round of 12 or Harvick and Hamlin out. That's bold. That's a hot take. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure I'll look stupid in a few months, but... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or genius. <laughs> <laughs> or that. It's always that fine line with geniuses, yeah. isn't it? Uh, uh, not, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, with uh, Hamlin kind of just, he's he's kind of at that point where I don't know. I mean, I have taken Denny Hamlin to win the championship, I think, the last three years. <laughs> so it's just like I, I'm, I'm at the point where I just, I just wonder whether or not he's going to have one of those years where it's just – catches up to him and it just, he just gets eliminated. And I don't know whether or not he has the mental makeup to win a championship. I just don't, I've kind of, I'm almost like in give up mode there. And with Harvick, I think it's because of his teammates, to tell you the truth. Uh, I think if he's going to have less wins and I think it might cost him, uh, you know, at his age, I also wonder whether or not we, we saw the last best of Kevin Harvick last year. So, Fair. um, but uh, you guys don't have Eric Jones, right? I do not have him making the playoffs. Nope, nobody has Eric Jones making the playoffs. So is that just that? That's petty, right? You just you, you think that's, that, that's just a really bad team owner. They're a mid pack. Yeah, they're they're I, they're not a bad team. Like run, I just they just don't have any funding. The, they just don't have the equipment that on a super speedway. Absolutely, he can be up there and chance to win away from a super speedway. I think you're just going to see about what like Bubba Wallace did last year, maybe a little better. Um, but I don't think they're a, a team that he can make this on points unless they finally found a bunch of funding in the off season that I'm unaware of and come out with a, a fast car, but I haven't well, heard he better any, get like, off to a good start because he, he could win Daytona. That I will say that last year he could win Daytona. I, I can definitely well, tell you that he that, could, he can be in a factor to win next, or this be- Sunday. That would be big. All right, CJ. So give us your round of 12 cars. Uh, I want to go back real quick to Di Benedetto. I want to say that Austin Dillon and Di Benedetto were kind of at a tie for me. I gave Di Benedetto the edge because he's in a contract year and he's got a history of pulling things out. That's the only reason I was really different there. As far as the four that I've got coming out in the round of 12, I've got um, Kurt Busch. This is where I have him exiting. William Byron, Alex Bowman, and probably my bigger shock of the round of 12, I've got Brad Keselowski coming out there. Right. I think he'll start the season stronger than he finishes. Okay, so Keselowski is your top surprise so far, being eliminated early. Uh, what do you think about uh, that uh, decision by CJ, Eric? 
I like it because I was debating the same thing. Like how? <laughs> really? <laughs> I can't. And yeah, why is that? I, well, he's not good on road courses. You got the Roval. Um, Talladega is a crapshoot. We already know that that you can get caught up in somebody's wreck and not. And he, plus, he's struggled on super speedways lately. He used to dominate. He, he's been a vocal, but not no more. Yep, it's just the product of the racing. It's and then uh, Vegas is hit or miss sometimes in the playoff race for Penske. They they seem to be really good there in the spring, and the playoff race they feast or famine. Okay. So I could see him if he struggles in Vegas, gets caught up in a wreck in Dega, and. As par for the course in the Roval, then yeah, I could see him exiting. All right, you're next, Eric. You're round of 12 drivers. I've got William Byron, which seems like uh, the common theme. Yeah, for we all have us him that Byron. Round of 12. Uh, and then I've got three Gibbs cars. I've got Bell, Bush, and Truex all out this round. Kyle Bush and Truex. Wow. Yep. That's early, Eric. I, You've given up I on think, those two, huh? Yeah, I, I think... One, Vegas has not been a strong track for Gibbs at all lately. And Talladega, and we know what Kyle Busch and Truex's history is at Talladega. Not good. And the Roval, uh, Kyle has struggled on Rovals. I think it's 32nd and 37th. Um, or his finishes there on, on counting Charlotte yeah, and Daytona too. last year. Kyle's a good yeah, driver, he, a good Roval driver. He's good on yeah. road courses, just not on yeah, Rovals. Yeah, I guess that's true. And, uh, and Truex, I feel like, would have to go to that race needing a win, and I don't have him winning. So uh, I just I think Kyle uh, may struggle for a little bit with the new crew chief. I mean, we saw what happened with the Penske guys last year. That's okay. Uh, as long as he it does took it them a while. Yep, but <laughs> I just I think this is the the end, and I think Christopher Bell making the round of twelve is a a uh, a good year for him in his yeah, first year with Gibbs. Uh, I think that's, he... that's a, that's your that's your boldest statement. He's your he's your top sleeper, isn't he? Like because uh, round of twelve, is. first time in the playoffs is pretty nice here. Yeah, yeah. For a Gibbs car, I mean that car hasn't made it past the first round since Matt Kenseth, and I believe fifteen. Um, so to get out of the first round with that car, I think is a good statement for the for that team. Okay, and you also like Bell. DJ as a as a sleeper along with Tyler Reddick. Both of you guys really like uh, Bell and Reddick as sleepers. And again, they're odd. Uh, actually, if you take a look at the odds, championship odds for both drivers, Bell's fifty to one, and Reddick is eighty to one. So the odds are not bad, considering you know for a driver that would get into the top sixteen. Um, mm -hmm. But you both kind of are leaning towards Bell. Do you got the better chance, uh, CJ? Yeah, I think Bell does. He's uh, he's got great equipment. I mean, coming into Joe Gibbs, um, so uh, he he with an underfunded team that w really wasn't Furniture Row, but had the loose relationship and was successful and showed speed pretty consistently. I think when he steps into a, a better car that can really demonstrate his talents, he's going to take advantage of it. All right. And Plus, we said they're fifty and eighty to one. Yes. yes. Yeah. I bell i mean i'm just using that as a gauge start off so we too. know what vegas <laughs> yeah. thinks about it we're not really serious about them winning a championship but no but i wouldn't uh, I, it wouldn't hurt to throw some money on them just in case right now because i think i think they both win at some point in the year obviously but i think bell wins pretty quick and i mean he got bristol dirt coming up in march next month and if he wins a race i don't think he's staying at 50 to one with a race no. one for long with Gibbs. <laughs> so um if he shocks everybody, it ends up having a really, really good season. I think we'd kick ourselves if he we could have had him at fifty to one, and he's going to end up that, at that. That, that is a completely to different stratosphere of parity. If 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 a guy like Christopher Bell or Tyler Reddick were to make the final four, that, then we're really yeah. talking about wow, things are really changing in NASCAR. So we should oh, yeah. be a good thing. So yep. uh, whether that happens or not, uh, I don't know. I doubt it. But, hey, you, you never know. We'll see. Because you guys are already tipping your hand that some of these you know, veteran drivers are on, their, are on the, the, uh, the back end of their careers. And, and I do, too, the way I feel about Harvick and Hamlin. So taking a look at the round of eight, that's where I have Kozlowski and Logano. And I've got Larson. And I have Bowman. So those are my round of eight. 
And Kozlowski and Logano, who were both in the championship last year, I have them at the uh, round of eight, CJ, uh, which doesn't surprise you with Kozlowski. I see where you have him, but you have Logano going back to the final four. We'll get back in a little, in a little bit. But, um, yeah, I just think it's going to be tough for those guys to get back to the final four again. Without a doubt. I, I mean, we've talked this entire show about how parity is the the key this year and there are so many guys that are good and you're it, it's all going to be about where you are in terms of your momentum coming into the the round of 16 and into the playoffs and you've got to like eric said you've you've got to be on every single race from there on there, there can't be any steps backward and that's really tough to do especially with this field this field of drivers right now and and i have bowman in the round of eight which you have eric Yep. So uh, he's he's showing more talent than I thought he had, to tell you the truth. And I think it is important for him to take that next step this year. He's got so many other young drivers that are competing. So it is it is very important for Bowman to take a, a bigger step this year. Yeah, and he's done it every year. He's went from a couple years ago, he's 16th in the final standings. Two years ago, he was 12th. And last year, he was 6th. So if he just keeps moving up, um, I, I think he's he's on that trajectory. He's in a Hendrick car that he's got talent. He's got a good car around him. He's got speed. So nothing's really changed in the car in the off season. That he, there's no reason that he can. I mean, you look at what he did in the playoffs too last year. He's he had four top eights in his last five yeah, races. He's coming on nine top tens in the last twelve. Yeah. He's can he carry that momentum? And and I I agree. I've had him in the same same round as you for that reason. That I feel like they can sustain that. All right, CJ, uh, your round of eight drivers. Got Elliot, <clears throat> Harvick, Truex, and Kyle Busch coming out. Wow, that's like a final four right there. Yeah, so look at that. Defending one. champ Kyle Busch and Truex. A little bit, you have them up a little. It's, it's interesting because Kyle Busch and Truex, Eric, you have them out round of 12. CJ mm-hmm. has them out round of eight. I have them going to the final four. So we all have a little bit of a different <laughs> staggering yeah, down uh, with both of those drivers, but yeah, you, you're that's about it for Kyle Busch and, and Truex for you, uh, CJ, and then Harvick. Yep, for all the reasons that we've talked about, I, I think it's a, a signal of a new age. I think consistency and being able to peak at the right time uh, is, is what's going to do it. And I think repeating year over year is going to be increasingly difficult, not just to win the championship, but to get into the final four itself. All right. Besides Bowman, Eric, who else do you have in round of eight? A carbon copy of you, actually. I had uh, Bowman and Larson and then the two Penske's of Kozlowski and Logano. So, uh, oh, um, OK. For the reasons, like I said last time about Logano or uh, Kozlowski and for Logano, I feel like he. This isn't an even year. Every odd or every even year, he makes the championship at four, 14, 16, 18, 20. <laughs> it's twenty one. So uh, I. That was my mind. Literally, that was my mindset. I, I scratched him out the other day, and I was like, I had to redo my number here. I'm like, does that say twenty two? Yep, that does say twenty two. Yeah, it's. I remember uh, you said that, and I forgot about it. We'll see. So <laughs> I, I went with the trend on that one, or I would have had him in. But I, I feel like too. <laughs> It's almost too obvious that if we go off of last year's speed, then I would almost get a Sharpie out. And If somebody said, don't change much, it's going to be off last year, I'd get a Sharpie and just put three Penske's in the championship four. That's how good they ended. But as we started our show, we talked about the momentum right. factor, and people are going to catch up to them eventually. I don't think it being a whole year, but you also have to weigh – there's a new car coming out next year. How much time and resources did Toyota and Chevrolet and other teams – spend on updating this car when it's going to be off or not this time next year because you got a new car how much money are they willing to spend to upgrade when they're like yeah let's just leave that budget aside let's just race what we've had from last year and let's focus on 22 so if that happens which it's nascar it's competitive i think people are going to upgrade um but if they don't then yeah penske is going to be tough but i i think people are going to try to improve and where does Penske find that speed? Because they were so good at the beginning of last year. They went through COVID learning each other, and they were so good at the end. Do people catch up? And I think they will. So that's why I have uh, Kozlowski and Logano out in the round of 12, or Yeah, round of eight. Yeah, the whole deal about next year being a, a new car is going to be a huge storyline the entire season. Yep. And that's going to be important in handicapping and something that we're going to, 
talk about almost every week as we try to find out. And, and that's, is there a specific way that you're going to be able to, like, is there going to be specific tip offs that you're going to be able to pick up as the season wears on Eric? Yeah, I think you're going to start having to look at like tracks. I think all these notes we've got at the start, just throw them away. Cause you don't know. Um, it's a completely new gear shifting, um, different handling, different. I mean, they don't even have lug nuts anymore. It's going to be a different pit stop. I mean, it's going to be similar, but it's going to be like an Indy car pit stop. It's just one hub. You just take it off, put a new one on. Um, everything's changing. The handling, the steering response, the shifting, the downforce levels, everything's completely different. So and there's it's going to change the way these guys drive. Anybody can do this year about it. That's, that's the next nope. year. Is there going to be a way where you're going to say after the first month of the season, hey, you know what? I, I I see how some of these these teams are going this year, and how other teams might be responding to the fact that they know that there's a new car next year, and and yeah, you know, I don't think they're paying as much attention this year as maybe they're already kind of looking financially to 2022. Is there a way for you to figure? Is it just? Oh, well, this car's slumping. It can't be just, well, this car's slumping, this car's hot. Is there anything that you can look at on a weekly basis or a monthly basis where you go, you know what, I think the reason that this car is struggling is because of next year's car, and they're not really all dialed in this year. And I think that's uh, going to we- I And I'm going to use that the rest of the season when I'm breaking down this particular team. I think maybe you'll see that later in the year because they don't even have the cars yet. For They already have a – all through the test, they've done like, okay, this is the template. This is what we want. Now they're in the phase of building them and giving them to the team. So the teams don't even have them yet. So right now they're full of focus on 21, and the drivers are all focused on 21. But I think as you get maybe towards the summer months okay. when the teams receive the cars and NASCAR is going to start testing them, um, letting people go out and test and – you might then look at the standings and like, ah, you're like, we're too far out. This is a lost cause. Let's let's now maybe focus to next year. We know this is how this car wants to handle. And this is what it wants to do. And and maybe we try a setup for it at this rate. Hey, look, either hey, we've already won a race. We already know we're in the playoffs. So let's maybe start testing for 22 for a little bit. Okay. Or hey, we're too far out of the playoffs. So let's let's focus on 22 setup. But right now, I would say there's there's probably not a lot of that going on. I think right now to look at is who upgraded in the off season as far as that car, the like resources. And I mean, COVID's still around. It's not like you had full shops and full people in massaging the cars. Um, so I think it's going to take a good month or two for us to see if anybody upgraded. Cause if you remember right last year, going into like April or and I guess the that first was my four point, races is that, can you, that's, can you find that? You'll be able to early. tell who upgraded. Yeah. yeah. I remember Hendrick, how, how, how their speed at the early portion of last year, like, whoa, they're, they're finishing yeah, up front yes. every week. Like, I, I think that's what you're going to see is like, okay, Hey, these guys upgraded. They, they did spend okay. some time and they'll say that in, in media quotes, we'll, we'll get a good idea after these zoom calls. And, and once the season gets going on who upgraded, cause drivers are vocal. They're going to tell you if there's a, if they feel like there there's a deficiency okay. somewhere, they're going to tell you. Um, so yeah, we'll be able to tell All that right. way, but I would say for 22, that'll be more summertime when that starts happening. Okay. Uh, final four, and I've got Blaney, Kyle Bush, and Truex. I already mentioned defending champ Elliott. So those are my four, and I am going to go full on with Ryan Blaney as my champion this year. He was my sleeper last year, and the only thing with Blaney, we all jumped on the Blaney bandwagon at some point last year, and then all all of a sudden, when Kozlowski and Logano started to get hot, Blaney just it just didn't work out. Was, there were a lot of races early in the season, CJ, where he, he, you know, bad luck. Most most of it was bad luck. Uh, no question, there's experience in there as well, uh, but it just wasn't his year. And there's, I I think, tell you the truth, I think if he doesn't make it to the final four, it's a major disappointment for him this season. 
I don't disagree because I've got him in the final four as well. I think um, his pace last season and the lessons that he learned in that small slump when his teammates took off, I think he's going to take those to heart. Um, I think he's a really good choice and really solid um, selection to put in your final four this year. Uh, of all the Penske guys, you know, I've got him equal with Logano in my final four here. So, so you have Blaney and Logano. You have two of those Blaney, two of the Penske drivers. Logano. And who else? Hamlin. I'm not giving up on him <laughs> just yet. And then uh, may, this might be the last season <laughs> if he fails. <laughs> uh, but then as far as champion goes, um, I'm going out on a small little limb. Uh, it's not a big stretch, but I think Kyle Larson comes in with the best equipment that he's ever had and a whole lot to prove uh, in being back in the series. And he's a guy that gets really hot. He's got a ton of talent, and I don't think that we've seen the best of him because he hasn't been in the best equipment yet. And Hendrick last year had the best equipment, um, among the best, certainly. Sure. Uh, so he's certainly going to take advantage of that. Well, I mean, odds-wise, Larson 11-1 to to win the championship and Blaney 12-1 to to win the championship. So uh, we, we've got some good odds right now on our two drivers to win championships. And you also have Blaney in your final four, Eric. Who else do you have? Uh, I got Chase Elliott joining him again. Uh, Hamlin, and I got Harvick. And you got the Hamlin-Harvick thing again. Harvick. Yeah, I, I think the reason I have Harvick is I feel like they're going to learn from last year and focus on that round of eight. I feel like they can get there. Um, and I think they're going to try everything they can to improve there because they know that was their deficiency. They did fine up until that point, and he struggled at those tracks. He knows Martinsville is not a great track for him. Texas is always great for him. Um, so I feel like they put extra emphasis this year on how can they get a win in that round? How can they get their cars ready for a win? So I've got him winning one of those three races. Okay. Uh, obviously not Martin. I don't have him winning Martinsville. I don't no. think he's just going to turn it on no. overnight. Um, <laughs> but I think he wins Texas or, or uh, Kansas and gets to the championship four by a win. Okay. I do not think he wins the championship because, like he noted, he's been junk at Phoenix over the last few years. Ever since the reconfiguration, he has not won a race there. He's got nine wins at Phoenix, but none have come since this reconfiguration. And and they looked lost last year. He admitted, like, no, we went to win that race. We just – that's the best we got. We, we're a top ten, but not a top five car anymore. Hey, well, there. if he's so, in the Final Four this year, no matter how bad his car is, he'll be fourth. Hell, yeah, exactly. You know? He's going to finish fourth out of four. And, 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 and this is again another reason why they have got. This is just, it's not fair. They need to change the championship venue every year, like the Super Bowl. You got to change yep. it. Just it, it's because there are drivers that are much better than other drivers at certain tracks. It's it's just not fair. It's not a it's not an even playing field. No, and that's why I went Hamlin as a champion because of he's good at Phoenix. He's going to learn from what they did last year there. Yeah. And uh, I feel like. Should have won last I, I year. Have this, Why didn't he win last year? He should year? have. Uh, Chase Elliott had like that extra rocket boost, uh -huh. it seems like, from, coming from the back. No, I, I, I think this is Hamlin's. He's got to win it. The, if he has another season like he should, he's, if he, he cannot go 0 for 3 in the championship four three years in a row, not I get one. Not. So. With Michael Jordan on his side again, I feel like that's a big storyline. Not obviously on that car per se, but can the goat run off on him, rub off on him a little bit, and get him a championship? That would be nice. And, that would be that. That's my nice story. I, sure. I, I've got it this year. I, I just feel like Harvick's not going to win Phoenix. Uh, Blaney should be close, but it's not one of his better tracks. And the odds of Elliott going back to back are slim to none. So I, Hamlin was the the byproduct of all okay. that. Yeah. Well, that makes sense if those four drivers get in. And the other thing, too, is not just the venue for the championship, but the entire playoffs are exactly the same. Exact same. Yep. So, OK, I mean, I don't know if they're going to plan on with the new car changing <laughs> that in 2022, but I hope so. All right. Now, let's get to the over unders and explain this again and then we'll go through it, Eric. So I'll give a number for a scenario. And if we think. We'll just start like first Stuart Haas racing over under six wins. So if we feel the four drivers with Stuart Haas can combine more than six wins and we choose over, if we feel like, eh, I don't think there's any way they're getting a six wins and you choose obviously under, or you can push and think, yeah, you know, I think we'll get exactly six okay. wins and say push. So, so um, what do you think? Then explain, I said, I'll go first to start it. So I think they're going to go over. 
I think they'll get seven. Um, they've got his teammates. They've got three combined wins. I do feel um, – I don't feel like any of them are going to get a win. I'm going to have Harvick at seven wins this year. Uh, well, he's had at least four. four. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> kind of tip my yeah. hand there. Where uh, I, I've got him winning in each round of the playoffs. So there's three, and I feel like he can get four regular season wins out of the out of the 26. So that's how I came to my okay. my seven for him. Uh, he do would it be a bonus if he gets some help to get over six? Absolutely, obviously. But if you look at over the years, uh, Sturhaus won ten times last year. He won nine of them. They won four total times in 2019. He won all four. They won 11 times in 2018. He won eight of them. He's he's consistently won for them. And, and I went all the way back to when he joined the team in 2014. He's won 78% of the races for Stuart Haas Racing. He's won 35 times. Next best is Kurt Busch at six. So he needs some help. I feel, obviously, by my playoff picks, I don't feel like he's going to get it because I don't have any of his other three teammates in the playoffs. But I feel like they will get over six ones this year. All right. I'm going to go under, so break the tie, CJ. I'm going over, and I interpreted your six as 5.5. I think he'll get six wins total on the season. I don't think he gets any help from his teammates, so technically that's an over for me. Okay. Next over, under. Uh, new winners this year. So that would be a good driver that has not won a race, not like a new winner, like new winners per season, but just a driver, a winless dr- full-time driver entering this year. Uh, without a win, there's 13 of so them. So that means uh, at least one list. driver has to win. Uh, yeah. So out of out these of drivers. Chastain, yep. Out of these drivers, at least one of these drivers gets a win. Josh Chastain, Tyler Reddick, Christopher Bell, Bubba Wallace, Matt, Matt DiBenedetto, Ryan Priest, Daniel Suarez, Michael McDowell, Corey LaJoy, Quinn Half, Cody Ware, Chase Briscoe, and Anthony Alfredo. Um, I think we should move that I up went to over. two. Move it up to what two? do you think, CJ? Uh, by default, I, I think we should move it to two. Let's do two. <laughs> I will say So if it's two, over. you're still yep. going over. Yep, because I've got Chastain, Reddick, and Bell. Or Chastain, yeah, Chastain, Reddick, and Bell all winning. Potential of Bubba with four. But, uh, a Dedo? He could be Possibly. there. I, I think three of the last five first-time winners have occurred at Daytona. So that's a trend to watch. Sure. Um, and we've had at least one new winner every year since 2016, two or more for five straight years. So I feel there you go. I'm going slightly over, um, but it could be a push at two as well. Okay. So, uh, two, uh, what are you going to do CJ? I'm going under cause I think it's going to be one and it's going to come from either Bell or Reddick in my opinion. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go under as well. That's a tough one. I'm going to go under as well. But I could easily see, just like Eric said, I could easily see Bell, Bubba, DiBenedetto, Reddick, those kind of guys to get their first. And and it's a parody sport now. So, yeah, I could see it. But two, that's why it's You've really got putting 12. it at two. It makes it even harder. Yeah, because it's smarter. Like, yeah. I don't know. Can go either way. And you got twelve wild card races, uh, eleven of them in the regular season. That that to me was tough. Is like you got seven road courses. Michael McDowell is on his best at super speedways and road yeah, courses. So kind of gift, but he is also zero for three hundred and fifty seven. Oh. So <laughs> <laughs> the Benedetta is zero for two hundred and twelve. So it's like uh, now you're weighing, but well, they're they due. Are good. They so, are due. Um, you got some good guys there. I think this is one of the talented list of guys that have not won a sure. race. I mean, Chastain's a Ganassi car. Reddick's in a RCR car. Christopher Bell in a Gibbs. Uh, yeah, Reddick Bubba, and Bell, when you're in your second year, you know, it's it's almost already. Should. It's time for a win. Yep. So. Yep, and they could. You got dirt. I mean, it's, this could be a wild year. Okay. So, uh, and then the final um, over-under? And we kind of tipped our hand on this one, but how many drivers that made the playoffs last year – won't be in it this year. Um, we set it at two. Obviously, Clint Boyer is not going to be in it um, because he's retired. So out of last year, you had the three Hendrick cars, all four at Stuart Haas, three of the four at Gibbs, all three at Penske. You had Kurt Busch with Ganassi, to Benedetto with the Wood Brothers, and Austin Dillon with RCR. So how many of do you think would be over under two of those guys? not being in and i went over so you went over uh, three 
I went over. Uh, do you think there'll be four new playoff drivers? I do, because I had uh, actually I had five. And right now, you, oh, I have you have Larson. okay, you have five. Okay. Yep, I got Larson, Bell, Chastain, Wallace, and Reddick as my five. Yeah, Larson uh, basically newcomers. kind of replaces Bell Boyer. That's what I. Yep, and then it's a little bold probably to have Bell, Chastain, Wallace, and Reddick all in the playoffs, but they're in good cars, and and that's why I think it was so hard to handicap because. As the guys I just listed, listed that made it, that's a solid group of guys that have to fall out um, for those five to come in. So it's tough to go over to, but I'm just rolling the dice that over. you're going to get Bell, Chastain, Wallace, and Reddick in when I also wouldn't be surprised if you only get two of them making it in either. Okay, I'm going over too. That's my only over out of the three. And CJ, how do you have it here? I'm over. Um, I'm over. Three, or if you count Larson. Okay, there you go. Because, yeah, you got Reddick and Bell. And who was the other one? Di Benedetto. Benedetto. You're the only one with Di Benedetto. Okay. Yep. So, Eric, you've, you're over on all three. I went over on all three. I went bold <laughs> early. <laughs> okay. And it's, I would not be shocked if it was under on all three, too. Just because wow. Stuart Haas, it's, Stuart Haas one scares me at six. I was like, oh, that's, that's going to be tough. Because... It's can Kevin Harvick get some help? That's going to be the biggest key is, or can he carry the weight and get, as I thought, seven wins? That's still ambitious that two of his last three years, he's got eight or more wins. That's the only reason I feel like seven, you're still taking a dip down with seven, but again, it's a new schedule. It's going to, he's not a strong, particularly strong road course racer either. Okay. And then on Friday, we've got our 500 preview. So we'll go a little bit in depth, not only, of course, on the race and the analysis and our picks, but we'll also just t- have a we'll, we'll try to talk. I know I'd like to get, get your take, guys, a little bit more on some of the other drivers. We didn't ever really have time to talk about today, like a William Byron. And, and there are a few others that we can uh, talk about. Ricky Stenhouse. So we'll, we'll do that on Friday's show. And you have your you have your report out for the season already, right, Eric? Just came out today. Yep, yep. Just came out today. Okay. So that's uh, that's that's that basically is just a little bit about what we just talked about today. Yep. All right. Just per driver and a little tidbit about him for their odds. So yep. And then also Friday we're going to have another show. We have a special. Now that's going to come out uh, at some point over the weekend. Uh, but we'll get it recorded on Friday. And uh, what's that going to be on? This is the 20th anniversary of uh, the, the famous 2001, the Black Sunday, Daytona 500 with uh, Dale Earnhardt's death. And we'll talk about the, the safety that's come around the sport since then. And as hard as it is to believe that that is the last fatality in one of the big three NASCAR divisions from trucks, Xfinity and Cub uh, to occur. So that's been a big co- topic of conversation on the uh, the Zoom calls this week with drivers of, of recognizing the safety that's happened in NASCAR since that wreck and how much of an impact the Dale Earnhardt's death has had on the, the safety of the sport moving forward and how much how many lives he saved, especially if you look at Ryan Newman's wreck last year and here he is back in the field racing on Sunday. And and if not for Dale Earnhardt's death, death in 2001, would Ryan Newman be here today after that wreck? So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that on Friday. All righty. And then CJ, what do you got working on for Rotowire? We will have a fantasy preview for the Clash up on RotoWire.com tomorrow. That's right, the we'll Clash. The- that's the that's, yeah. that's the road course race at Daytona, basically. Yeah. Well, exactly right. <laughs> okay. Very exciting. Uh, <laughs> it's good. It's at night. It's not to give us something to fall asleep to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll know who wins after the drawing for positions to tonight. Tonight, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, and then we'll have the same. We'll have a fantasy preview up for the duels on Thursday, and then we'll get together and talk on Friday. Absolutely. Sounds good. Looking forward to it, guys. Thanks a lot. Great job, as always. Uh, we'll talk to you on Friday. And then, Eric, uh, you'll be at you'll be in Daytona. You won't be at the track when we talk, but you will be in Daytona, correct? I will be in Daytona, yeah, because we'll uh, uh, play it on 3 o'clock start on Friday, and uh, you'll be I will at the not beach. be there until probably around 5. I'll be you'll at the be beach. At the beach. Be my, that, uh, my that's condo a good beach, backdrop yeah. as well. <laughs> Much better than a TV yeah, back here. You'll have yeah, to work yeah. On that. Maybe some palm trees and an ocean. Yeah. yeah. All <laughs> right, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you again on Friday. Awesome. Thank you.